Hi everyone, welcome to the next video in the series Foundation for Emails. And today we're going to talk about images and how to get those into your emails. Uh, just as a side note on images, be careful when you're using them in email messages. You want to make sure that the emails don't make the overall message size get too large, so it'll be choked and kicked back by a lot of the email systems. You also want to make sure that you have a a good ratio between text and images in your emails. That'll make sure that it gets through the spam engines, uh, spam filters properly. I won't, if you have an all image uh, message, that tends to flag some of the filters that it might be spam. So just keep that in mind when doing your overall construction of your emails. And let's get into it. Um, I've got using the code from my last uh, video and it's pretty much all the same. And I've already fired up the system using the NPM start. That's the Zerb stack. And when I do that, I get this boilerplate text that's kind of the, kind of the sample text that you get when you uh, first install the system. So we're gonna add some images in. Now I've got some images on my desktop, so I'm just gonna copy those in. And I've got, here is the directory that you'll see the same one is over is oops, sorry I'm pointing at the wrong place it's over here source images I'll paste those in you'll see them show up over here now generally often you'll see that this system will automatically copy things over that doesn't always work with cut and paste like that especially when you're kind of going around the system like this um, if I try to do one of them Let's try to put in a really large image here. I'll copy that one. I'll paste that individual one in. When it when you do one individual one, again, this mileage may vary with this. This might be my configuration, and there may be changes in future code releases. But when I did this initially, um, the event if I did more than one, it would not trigger the event to have the compiler move the files up. Um, if I did one, it would. So if for some reason you're adding assets to your source directory and they don't automatically show up in your distribution directory, all you really need to do is to rerun, uh, restart up your server. So you can just do that with npm start for development or npm run build if you're going to be doing the full distribution one. And there we go. There's our code again. So We've got images in the system here. Um, here's our source, distribution is up on top. We'll take a look at that in just a minute. Now we want to be able to use these. So we can put in, the easiest way is to simply, I'm going to, I created an extra column, a row and a column in here, and I'm just going to put in an image. And let's do 400 JPEG. save it, it re you'll see it. this terminal window kicks off the recompile job and we go back to our email and here is an image right there. Now the width of the image, keep in mind there's, uh, we'll go over this in a future video, but there are some uh, media queries involved. With this framework there's only one breakpoint and we'll go over, again, we'll go over a list later on, so, but you'll have two different widths one, is one for below, one for small, basically, and one for large. So uh, you may be able to take advantage of that for sizing images appropriately. For right now, we're just going to talk about how to get those images in and how to you know, have them show up properly in your email. So we've got the images here, and we can drop in as many as we need to. Um, and when you run the system here, it actually, if you have any images or modify them, in your source directory, as we saw before, it copies them right up into the dist assets image directory, and you'll see them all listed here. Now, if we go in the file system, this is one of the other things I wanted to show you. I'm going to run npm run build. And in this case, it doesn't just 
render things for local viewing, it's actually going to render, it shows it to us, but when we go into the code, the index is actually ready to be cut and pasted. All of the inlining is done of the styles, so it's all set ready to cut and paste into your email distribution tool. So that's that much is cool. That's pretty awesome. Now we want to be able to check the size of the images because one of the other advantages of the system is that it will do some rudimentary, um, some basic compression of those images. So here's our source directory. I'm going to bring this over to see the, oh, we already got the file sizes right here. And there we go. And then we're going to want to go to the same place. Oops, got to navigate here. Sorry about that. Going to go to our distribution directory and look at those same files. Now you notice a lot of them. Here's 18.7 source destination, 8.4 source down to 8. No change in 18.2. 402 is 16.3, 16.3, and 9.5 megs and 9.5 megs. So only one of them was really adjusted at all, compressed. Um, when you're using images, uh, one of the things that I've kind of been doing as a practice now is uh, if you're going to use a CDN, say Cloudflare or any of the other uh you know, CDN sources, so you can have those images stored outside of your own systems. What you want to be able to do is put that code into your, the remote code into here. So it references, instead of referencing it locally, uh, it's going to reference it outside, and we'll see that in a minute. But you copy all those images up first. So do all that stuff first. If you know you're going to have the images, generally you're working from a design. You've been given a PSD file. You've saved off those individual images. You've done some basic layout work like we see here. And then you're going to drop the images in to particular places in the email where you want them to show up. So the email, I mean, sorry, the images have already been sort of pre-set. They've already kind of been uh, set up for you to be dropped in. If you're doing it all yourself, then you're going to want to take these images, run them through some kind of compression, or you know, you're going to modify them a little bit, size them properly for your emails, but then also compress them if you, you need to. So nine times out of ten, you've probably already done this compression piece. You've kind of gone into Photoshop, you've saved it at a lower DPI. Um, you may have changed the size, changed the file format, you know, how whatever you do to your images. Copy those up to your CDN first then from a source perspective you can either use a variable here in the email itself if you have different sources different directories in your cdn for different emails you know email campaigns um, or we can simply just put in a, a just a full url for that particular image and that's nice if you're going to reuse images so if i go to if i want to does a demonstration of this i'm going to go to unsplash they have a nice uh service where you can just grab the images but also does some sizing for you based on the URL. So if I grab that URL, I can put it right there, save it, the emails recompiled, and there's the image. Now the advantage of this is that without any jumping through hoops or any variables involved, if you've got your CDN image right here already, when we go to compile it, it's already going to be saved up here. So if I do a, let me re, I'm going to regenerate this stuff here. Make sure all the code is all set. And go to dist. There we can cut and paste. Now, if I look for, there is my image source right here. Okay, so it's already there. It's already been in, you know, it's already part of the original generated code. 
so I don't have to go in after the fact and do any search and replace or anything. If you know, some people go through the process of creating all of this code, and then after the fact, will copy their once they know it's going to look okay, then they copy the images up to their CDN and then do a search and replace. And I, you know, that's great. I just get nervous about modifying the file after the fact. So that's part of my workflow. Yours may vary. This seems to work for me. So I'll just copy the stuff up there and away it goes. Um, as far as positioning um, images within your email, we'll talk about that in, a, in another video. Uh, oh, I did want to cover one thing where if we have, let's go to another source for an image. Here is an image. Now, here is an interesting behavior that I've seen. I'm going to copy this image. And then I'm going to go to my file system, wherever that one is. Here's the, these are the images that are in my source directory. I'm going to, oops, sorry, let's do a save as. Can't just do a copy and paste from the web. Oops, where am I here? I got alerts coming up in another screen, so my apologies. Okay, I'm going to assets, images, and we're going to save it right there. You'll see this another image here. It's saved over here. And the 500 image, which is our strawberries, that does not get copied up to the top. Once again, it's one of those oddities, and all you really have to do is kickstart it. We can watch it happen in real time here to the file system. And there's the strawberries on the distribution. So if you're doing some local development and you cut and paste things, I just found that you know, if I, I had a web-based repository for a lot of the images that I was using. And I would save things down, copy them in, and when I went directly from a web page, save as, put it into a directory, into the source or image directory, uh, it did not automatically really kick off the process to copy those images up to the distribution directory. So keep that in mind. When in doubt, just restart that process, npm start, and it works just fine. Um, that's really it with images. It's really pretty simple. Um, there are variations on a theme, obviously. You can do things with style sheets for the images, all that stuff. We'll cover all that later on. And we'll have a separate video on all the media queries as it you know, pertains to the break, one breakpoint that you have in the emails. And with that, um, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, please comment below. Thanks.